Hey, this is part 11 in my series on Python for stock analysis, and uh, you can find links for the previous videos as well as the GitHub repository in the description. All right, so in part 10, where we had left off, I had created a simple class here, and we are initializing a stock symbol and then going out and getting some data. All right, the data may be stored on our computer, or we may have to use an API to download data. All right, so I went ahead and tested that at the end of the last video, right? And uh, we just have a simple, you know, data frame with just some basic transactional data from each day. Okay, so I'm going to go a bit further here, and uh, I'm going to add some data transformations in here, and maybe start doing some plotting of, of what we get. All right, so I'm going to add a new method here, and uh, I'm going to call it calculate volatility. Okay, and it's going to take a data frame to be passed in. All right, so I'm actually going to make this work with the get data method. All right, so I'm going to add a column. Right, and the first column I'm going to get is uh, the returns. All right, and uh, I'm going to calculate that as a, an NP log. All right, and uh, I'm going to use the close. Right? If you want, you can use the adjusted close. Okay, so an instantaneous rate of return, and then we have to decide well, how much precision do we want there? So I'm going to go ahead and get four decimals of precision. All right, and then from this, I can calculate sort of a rolling volatility. All right, and I'm going to use a 21 day, so a one month here, and uh, it's going to be the standard deviation. And again, um, once I'm done with all that, I'll round to four decimals. Okay, all right, so basically a one month volatility here, or one month daily volatility. Okay, we also might just want to sort of know the absolute change, so I'm going to put that in there. All right, and that's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to take the the difference of the close. Okay, we'll take a look at the high low spread. All right, and I'll just take the difference between the high and the low and divide that by the open. All right, so there's lots of sort of price derivations that you can calculate. I'm just going to put in some common ones and then I'll leave it up to you uh, to kind of expand it if you need to or want to. Okay, I don't think we need four decimals there, so two since it's in dollars. All right, and then uh, we'll get, we'll calculate what I'll call an expected change. So basically, we're going to calculate what is a one standard deviation move. All right, and it's going to be, right, whatever the last volatility is, all right, times the times the uh, close from the previous day. All right, and again, we'll get two decimals. Okay, I'm going to calculate how many actual standard deviations the stock moved in a particular day. So uh, I'll just call that one magnitude. All right, and that's going to be the change uh, divided by the expected change. And uh, yeah, we might as well keep that also to two decimals. All right, and then uh, I'm, I'm going to get an absolute value here too because I can make some pretty interesting graphs from that. Okay, and then uh, when we're doing the rounding and so forth and calculating that standard deviation, the first few rows uh, have a bunch of uh, not a numbers in there, and so I'm going to drop those off. Okay, and then, like I said, I am going to call this inside the data. All right, so... Here we go. Okay, and uh, let's test that. Okay, somehow I forgot the quotation marks here when I was making up a new column. Uh, let's see if that does it. All right, and so there we have it. And uh, if you want to see those column names, all right, there they are. Okay, so before I wrap up this video, we might as well plot the uh, return distribution. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and so I'm going to keep track of where where the start date and the end date are. Okay, so we'll get the first row and then the, the last row. Okay, and then uh, we're ready to go ahead and plot. So I'll just plot a histogram. Okay, we'll get the returns there. And we'll just kind of guess how many bins will be good. I'll try 20, and then I'll put some edge color in there. Okay, I'm going to plot a super title. All right, so I can have two lines in my, in my output, all right, for the title. And I'll make this uh, a little bigger, so font size. All right, and then the regular title will be the date range. Okay, and then we'll just show that plot. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. Okay, so uh, there we have it. There's our histogram, and then, yeah, maybe we could set the figure size a little bigger. That depends on your personal preference there. All right, but it does everything we're kind of looking for. Uh, what does the returns look like for the past year or so uh, for Apple? All right, we can see they're mostly normal. All right, so that's going to do it for part 11. All right, part 
12, I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue working on uh, a couple more plots uh, before we move into doing some other data transformations. So I hope to see you there.